In December of 2022, my Amazon business did over $471,000 in revenue with over $80,000 in profit. And in this video, I'm doing a full case study breakdown of the Q4 scaling process, lessons learned, mistakes I made, how I'm going to crush past 100K profit this year. So let's get right in the video. Also want to let you guys know on Monday, May 29th, so two days from now, we are going to be raising the price of the FBA roadmap by 50 bucks. So you can check out the link in the description to get lifetime access to all future updates, 12 plus hours of content, a bunch of exclusive software deals, lots of strategies we're adding in that I've never shared that I'm so excited to share to our FBA roadmap members. We have a Zoom call every Sunday. Those Zoom calls are all recorded, private Discord community, and so much more. So check out the link in the description, flushmiles.com slash FBA roadmap. Let's get right into the video. So the $471,000 in sales in 31 days case study, completely online arbitrage in December, 2022. So wanna to talk to you guys about my lessons learned, takeaways, what I can do better, and I got a few key points um, to dive into and all this stuff, but you can see uh, my sales chart right here in terms of breaking out exactly um, how that went. So you can see heavily weighted towards the Christmas run up. The vast majority of the sales came before December 20th right there. So there was ever a time where you can really make a bunch of money in online arbitrage in a really small amount of time. It's between December 1 and December 20th, right? As the lead up to Christmas, people are paying crazy prices. You're buying inventory super cheap because there's a lot of Christmas sales and Black Friday sales at the end of November, stuff selling for more than it ever is, you're paying less than you ever are, and it's moving a lot quicker, basically. So, a couple things. So, as, as those of you guys have been around for a while know, my big goal was $100,000 in profit for December. That was what I had been saying the whole year. I, I have videos in the past talking about it. I only ended up doing about $80,000 in profit for that month, excluding cash back and, uh, and such. And the big issue was my restock limits were actually messed up. And, and the problem with that was I got a warehouse, as, as you guys know, in October of last year. And then I went on vacation. And when I came back from vacation, my restock limits were completely nuked, basically. Amazon wasn't letting me send in a lot of new inventory right there and that basically made it so i couldn't fba anything until like it was already december when it's like pretty much too late to fba stuff from a timing perspective so basically i was stuck and did really low sales only like i think 100 or 150 grand in um november of 22 because i couldn't fba anything and it wasn't merch fulfilled season yet i did end up still doing a pretty good december as you can see once merch and fulfilled season kicked off specifically in the peak days of between December 5th and December 20 and December like 15th or so right there you can see my best day was um, December 10th and then there was like another really good one was like December 15th um, or so that was right just above 40,000 bucks in sales which is right around like 10,000 profit is probably about 8,000 between 7,500 and 8,500 it's right around like a 17 18 percent um, margin right there. And I learned a lot this year specifically. The big thing that really tripped me up, I could have done so much more um, with restock limits. Like I had a whole list of replens I was going to buy in early November, late October, and I ended up not being able to buy pretty much any of them um, just because I wasn't going to be able to FBA that inventory in uh, time. So I had to kind of take the foot off the gas until Black Friday because Black Friday is the best time of the year to buy products to flip because just sales are going crazy and it's right before peak demand time of the year. So during Black Friday, I ended up dropping like over 100K basically and bought an unbelievable amount of stuff basically. And then the difference is that a lot of people will buy inventory during Black Friday, during Christmas, and then FBA it once FBA really becomes a thing at the end of December, early January. Meanwhile, what I do and what I'd recommend a lot of you guys do, we recommend all our students do, is rather than FBA that inventory later when there's a, a lot less demand, prices are going down, there's a lot of people FBA new inventory, I'd rather you guys just FBM stuff, right? Because the best time of year to get the buy box as an FBM seller is in December. So I just buy stuff and then FBM it. And the beauty of that is that you can buy a product sell it through much quicker and then replenish it much quicker, right? So you can place a test order, right? And then get that inventory in and some of it you'll have sold same day, next day. And then you have more inventory on the way because, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff's bought just using coupons, Black Friday sales, stuff like that, which are pretty much going on the whole month of December and, and late uh, November, pretty much like they say, it's like limited time only, like a lot of these prices stick around from my experience. So you really want to be prepared and have that merchant fulfilled uh, infrastructure in place uh, for specifically between December 5th and December 15th um, to really, really go hard. And you can easily do 
like 50% of your annual sales volume just in November and December. I don't do that. I'm scaling the whole year, but you guys definitely can if your goal is to make like 100K profit for you. It's like a great way to do it. Basically, Black Friday is the best time to buy, basically. So that's when, in my opinion, it's really when you turn the jets on um, and just merge fill all that stuff throughout December because that makes it a lot less risky. The cash flow cycle is better. And overall, it's just a, a really good way to do things in terms of turning your capital around really quick. And especially if you're leveraging, Merchant Fulfilled is really, really good and really cash flow efficient for leveraging basically so it it's really incredible like how you can scale some of this stuff like i sold like 1300 units in a day um as you can see a 1288 was the peak right there and i remember back in early 2019 i set a goal i was like i want to sell i want to wake up to one sale a day and during q4 i was waking up to like 100 sales and like 500 a thousand bucks profit before the day even started um right there and it's kind of funny even talking about it but the repricing strategy it's interesting because like typically when you reprice you're like lowering your prices to get more sales. But what I was doing was I was so nervous about being able to fulfill like hundreds of merch fill orders a day. There was one day I raised a price on an item 30% and I was raising it like $2 an hour, $1.50 an hour. And it just kept moving basically. And just the profit per unit just kept skyrocketing um, throughout the day. So it's pretty funny. Like when you're, when you're finding yourself trying to raise the price, so you can stop selling them as quick because it's giving you anxiety about fulfilling them basically. But some of you guys who are really scalers are going to, are going to see that this December. And I'm excited for you guys um, to see that. But basically, yeah, repricing it's typically during December, it's optimizing for um, you know, the highest profit per unit possible for a specific ASIN because almost everything's replenishable in December. Cause like if something sells out, you just order more of it and it's here three days from now, right? It's also a really good idea to buy expedited shipping from certain websites that ship really quick when you purchase it for like 10 bucks. It's so worth it to get that inventory, you know, a day or two um, quicker, basically. And then kind of tying back to the restock limit side of things, I speculated way too much last year. Like I was buying toys thinking they would go up, hoodies thinking they would go up. Meanwhile, if I just stuck to my bread and butter, I would have had restock limit slots available and I would have made more money in the long term. And I would have worked less because I wouldn't have had to spend a bunch of time like analyzing new products and uh, and stuff like that. So I, just quick flips is the way, in my opinion, um, basically, because if you consistently do that, then your cash flow is always good. You always have dry powder for new products. And you never end up having a bunch of dead inventory in restock limits like I did from not fully optimizing pricing, so on and so forth, basically. And in terms of like why these months, like right now and in, in May, June, you know, Q2, Q3, et cetera, are so important because you're testing, you're learning. And then in Q4, you can push heavy with a lot of these products, FBM, or even just new SKUs in general with a newly acquired knowledge, capital, resource, et cetera. And I would have also had a lot easier time if I delegated more and had actual manpower to help me fulfill these FBM orders, but I didn't put the infrastructure in place. And like, I think with OA, online arbitrage, you could easily do a million and like 200K profit in, in December with a really, really, really efficient merch filled operation, even if you have no sales tax, basically. And then the last like big takeaway is kind of tying into like the not speculating what messed up with my restock limits and really just going hard with Black Friday is just sticking to the bread and butter. Like the 80-20 rule is so true. Like 80% of your profits come from 20% of your items and 20% of your, you know, different ASINs you have and stuff. So if you can just dial in and be consistently in stock on those, the volume on stuff increases like crazy, especially like stuff that's really giftable, toys, clothing, et cetera. So just stick to your guns and you'll have a lot harder, a lot easier time basically because that's a mistake I had made for sure was not doing that. So big takeaways, definitely merch filled completely life-changing. Like uh, once again, it's it's crazy that that's a contrarian opinion that you should do a lot of merch filled this summer, but it's it's insanely profitable. I'm really going to recommend. And I, there were, I had a ton of like coaching students that did like 100K, 50K, 10K profit. Um, 50k sales you know 10k profit their first time that month and it's a beautiful thing it really raises your plateau around uh how you see money in your mindset and everything so it's a beautiful thing december 22 was a great month i really think i can do 100k profit in december this year with a lot more optimized restock limits and fba and i'm going to really start preparing for that in early october rather than early november this year so thank you guys for watching if you guys got any questions let me know in the comments Check out the roadmap if you haven't already. Price goes up in two days. Love you guys. See you in the next one.